Hey guys, it's Anusha here. You may know me from Instagram or Twitter. I'm foxville underscore art. Or you might remember me from my old podcast, The Art Corner. Um, but for those of you who don't know me, my name is Anusha Sayed. I am a freelance illustrator working in the industry for about five years now, um, mostly children's books. I've illustrated over 20 picture books and a couple of young adult covers as well. Um, I have done like comics, editorial illustration, greeting cards, basically everything under the illustration umbrella. I also work as a freelance character designer for animation, mostly working on development stuff for preschool TV shows. Some of my past clients include Netflix, Disney Junior, DreamWorks TV, and Google. Those of you who remember me from my podcast will know that I, like a lot of people, I didn't have a great art school experience. I felt like it didn't really prepare me for life out of school. Like I learned how to draw. I um, really worked on my art skills. You know, I learned how to be an illustrator, but not necessarily how to be a professional illustrator. You know, I didn't really learn how to survive and find work or any of the business aspects of the job. Um, everything that I've learned has been through trial and error. And I made that podcast initially with Vicky, with Vicky Sai, my beautiful, beautiful friend. Everything that I've learned has been through trial and error and guidance from the art community online. And that is kind of why I decided to start up this YouTube channel to um, impart some of my knowledge, give a little bit of insight about this industry, especially because I feel like a lot of stuff about the world of illustration is just kind of kept in the dark and the information isn't really readily available, especially for people outside of North America. So for my first video, I want to talk to you guys about how to get your start in an illustration career. Um, I feel like that's probably the question that I get asked most. I know it's daunting when you are a new graduate, gra a new graduate being flung into the real world and trying to find a job, or maybe you're a self-taught audit. <laughs> or maybe, sorry, just can't talk, or maybe you're a self-taught artist and you don't really know where to start. So I'm hoping that this video might be able to help you guys out. This is probably gonna be a two-part video. Um, today I'm gonna go over where to find work, uh, how to find clients, how to get in touch with them. Part one is gonna be about finding clients and how to submit to them. And then second part will hopefully be about art directors and, you know, um, as well as other passive ways to find clients. You'll notice that I keep looking down. Um, it's because I do have my notes open on my laptop. The, we're gonna be talking about a lot of stuff today and I do need my notes, unfortunately, so I'm gonna be darting my eyes down a little bit, sorry. Um, anyway, the big thing that I have to stress before we start is that I'm gonna be teaching you plenty of tips and tricks today, but unfortunately, the hard truth is they're not gonna mean much if you're, your skills aren't at a commercial level yet. You need to make sure you have art skills that are ready to share with the world and that you are proud of. Um, if you feel like you aren't there yet, the good news is, is that you can always improve. Like. I've been working for five years now. I can always improve, even 10 years down the line. Like there's always room to get better and learn more and, you know, hone up your skills. When I first started out, you know, I uh, had a lot of trouble finding work and I spent a lot of time submitting to places and like doing all the right things, but I just wasn't finding work. And so eventually I took a step back and I realized that this was more of a portfolio issue. So I... You know, I need some time to improve my art and I worked on my fundamentals, color, composition, you know, really reworked my portfolio into something new and like something that I was really proud of. And then once I felt I was ready, I sent it out to a bunch of places and that's when I really started finding work. Um, and that ended up being the solution to overcome that initial hurdle and initial hurdle, sorry. <laughs> Um, also, this video is going to go over things that worked for me personally. Um, everyone's artistic journey is different. What worked for me might not work for you, but I'm going to share what did work for me. Uh, I'm also not going to share my artistic journey in this video, just because it's going to end up being like a really 
really long video. Um, but if it is something you're interested in, just hearing about where I got my start and like what I've been doing for the past five years, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, let's get to it. First of all, what is an illustrator? Um, so an illustrator is basically a type of commercial artist uh, who creates two-dimensional work for a company or a client of some sort uh, they, and with the goal of communicating ideas to an audience. This is usually alongside of some text, like in an article or a picture book or something like that, but doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, this is in contrast to a fine artist um, who don't necessarily need to communicate to the audience. It can, like, it can just exist as art. Um, I feel like there is a lot of blurred lines between what is fine art and what is illustration. And you're trying to categorize it this way, but it's usually dependent on what the artist's intent is. Um, it becomes a little bit easier to define what illustration is once you start to categorize it a little bit. Um, there are a lot of branches within illustration, um, and each one has its own requirements and types of clients. Some of the branches that you can find work in include publishing. This is the area that I'm most familiar with. This can include picture books, book covers, uh, board books, nonfiction, and graphic novels. Uh, you can work in product design. This is any type of surface, surface design, like illustrating textiles, mm, cards, like greeting cards, sorry, uh, postcards, stationery. Um, and by the way, textiles can include things like, you know, home goods or fashion. Uh, communication design, that is infographics and diagrams. Uh, scientific illustrations, that's usually for textbooks and journals. Uh, editorial, that can include spreads, spots, and covers for magazines, newspapers, and blogs, animation and video games. So this is technically not illustration per se, but I did want to bring it up because I find that like, because like I have experience in working in this area and I find that a lot of illustrators do end up working in animation as well. Um, illustrators just have a great sense of color and design, which, you know, is needed in animation. Um, so some Jobs that you can find in animation can include character design, background, painting, color styling, and visual development. So as a professional illustrator, you don't need to pick just one of these areas. Um, if you have a flexible portfolio, you could work in all of these, potentially. Um, I've actually have worked for almost all of these industries except for scientific illustration. And that's because I, I don't really have a lot of information on this area, except that I've think you usually need a scientific background to go along with it. Um, and it's very research heavy and I'm not about that life. <laughs> it's, it seems like a lot of work. I know that some artists, when they're starting out, they don't really have an idea. They don't have any idea which area that they want to work in. Or if I ask them what they want to do, they'll be like, oh, I guess children's illustration, editorial, stationery, I'll do anything. Um, they might say this because they are genuinely excited in working in all of these areas, or it could also be because they're unsure of what interests them or that they're willing to take anything that they can get. So this kind of thinking might end up working against you, um, and it's going to reflect badly in your portfolio because it might seem like you have a lack of focus. Try to decide what area of illustration you want to work in and then you can gear your portfolio to that specific industry. I'll make another video dedicated entirely on portfolios in the future, but I'm just going to skim over it very quickly. At the very least, you know, as an illustrator, you must have an online portfolio. This is how people are going to see your work. Um, and because it's all online now, your portfolio is going to do the talking for you because you're not <laughs> around to speak for it. Uh, and so it's important that's a strong reflection of yourself and your work. The reason I say that you should have some focus in your portfolio is because your portfolio is a representation of the type of work that you can do. So if your portfolio is full of adult fantasy art that's like, I don't know, kind of booby or whatever, and you want to do cute picture book work, it's not likely that you're going to get hired for it because the client doesn't know that you have the capability for the picture book stuff and they aren't going to take that, they are not going to take that risk. Likewise, if you don't know what industry you want to work in and your portfolio is like a mishmash of styles and genres, it can be a little bit confusing to a client. I feel like this is the issue I see a lot in student portfolios where like 
there isn't a really clear direction in the kind of styles and the kind of work that they want to do. And so they just have this like random artwork, which is perfectly, you can work in all of that kind of stuff, but like if you're just not going to get hired for the stuff that you want to do. So depending on what you do want to do, make sure you have relevant examples in your portfolio and try to cater it to that audience. Now let's talk about getting your first gig. If you are an illustrator, you are probably a freelancer. Uh, working from home, being contracted by different clients to work on different portfolios catered to their vision. Um, unlike a studio job where you'll be working nine to five and um, getting a bi-weekly paycheck and you know regular paycheck, regular work, it's different when you're a freelancer. You sometimes don't know when you're going to get paid or when you're going to get work. Um, and finding work is going to require a lot of effort on your part. One day you'll reach a point where clients are going to be lining out the door to get the chance to work with you and you won't have to lift a finger or get off your lazy butt to find work. Um, but right now you have to do the work and go find that. This means networking, submissions, cold email, you know, all that good stuff. In terms of finding clients, there are several ways that you can go about it. Social media, submissions, and conventions. Again, because I don't want this video to be like 13 hours long, I'm only going to focus on submissions today. Um, this might seem a little counterintuitive, uh, counterproductive because I actually don't do submissions anymore. I get 90% of my projects because of social media, but the reason I'm foc on, focusing on submissions is because, um, it was absolutely vital when I was starting out and it was, I hopefully will be for you too. <laughs> So by submissions, I mean actively going to prospective clients and submitting your work to them. The way that you find clients is going to take a little bit of research on your part. Building your client base. Okay, the first thing you want to do is make a spreadsheet. Fun. <laughs> so I like having a big Google sheet or an Excel file, whatever you want, where I can keep track of all the people that I want to work with. Um, and then I can continuously update it and add new people as I go along. This spreadsheet is going to include all the prospective people that you want to work with, like company name, art director name, um, and their contact information, email, website, whatever. Uh, you can also include additional details like when you contacted them, uh, if they responded, and whether you worked with them or not, and if you did work with them, how much they paid you. Magos.blog created an excellent free-to-use spreadsheet, which I will include in the description. So once you've created your spreadsheet file, you want to fill it up with contacts. And this is going to require research. So depending on the work that you want to do, you're going to research on Google all the possible people that you want to work with. Um, this can include magazines, publishers, mm, puzzle companies, like literally anyone. Um, and not just big places like Hallmark and The New Yorker. There are so many niche publications and companies out there that I had never heard before until I started doing research, like, I don't know, Pony Girl magazine, <laughs> they're hiring. Um, I would stress that you stick to places that would commission work, that already commission work similar to your own style. Um, don't waste your time submitting to places that you definitely wouldn't be a fit for because it's unlikely you'll get a response and that it might end up being a waste of time, but that's not a hard and fast rule. Personally, I know that I'm not going to be doing a lot of editorial illustration just because my style is very children's books -y. Um And a lot of editorial illustration these days has a pretty distinct graphic style that they're going for. And I know my style just doesn't match. On the other hand, I have been contacted for a couple of editorial projects in the past, um, but these articles were specifically baby related. Um, in those cases, so my style did match. However, those were instances where the art director directly contacted me and not, you know, me submitting to them. So I don't know. It might be different when you're actually applying to places. Okay, in terms of research, um, easiest thing to do is literally just Google, um, you know, magazine illustration submission, and you'll instantly have a list of places that are accepting submissions. You can see what your peers and other artists have worked on um, and see if they're hiring. Um, when I'm out shopping, if I see an illustrated product that I really like, like a 
you know, like a little illustrated vase or a tea cozy or a puzzle. I don't know why I keep saying puzzles. I'll, you know, lift up the product. I'll see who made it, what the company is, and I'll search the website up later and see if they're accepting illustrator submissions. But basically all this, all this research that you're doing right now, you want to note down all of these websites. So a lot of these websites are going to have a submissions page. Um, you might have to dig around a little bit for it, but usually you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, you know, where like the navigation bar is, and you might have a page that says like contact or it's in like the FAQ or in careers or even just submissions. Um, and you're going to apply over there. Crafting a submissions email. So usually when you know when you go to that submissions page, they are going to list out their submission requirements. Uh, they're going to ask you to send an email or fill out a form um, with giving some information about yourself and some samples of your work. So you know every website is different. Some people are going to ask for a specific number of samples, like three to five or up to 10. Um, some will only accept low resolution files. Some will ask for only a PDF. Um, some might ask for a link to your portfolio and uh, sometimes people ask for a resume as well. Every submissions page is different. So you wanna make sure you follow those guidelines exactly. Um, because if you don't, it's a good way to get rejected before they even get a chance to look at your work. In general though, don't put in things like a WeTransfer transfer link or like 20 files that are I don't know what thousand GB. I don't I don't know file sizes. They are gonna hate you since you're probably gonna be submitting to like hundreds of people. Um, I like to have a um, like a template that I work off of, but it's more of a guideline than anything. I really try not to make it look like a copy paste. Um, I do try to make my emails as personal as possible. Like it's not a good look when your email is clearly a copy paste and you've forgotten to change the addressing name to like from, it's supposed to be Susan and you called her Robert. Like why would you call her Robert? Um, speaking of whenever possible, try to actually find the art director's name in the email that you're submitting. Uh, you can usually do this by just Googling the company name um, and then like art director or going onto LinkedIn and seeing who's on the design team. Um, Otherwise, you can write something like to the Google design team, uh, which to me feels a little bit more personal and better than saying something like, dear sir or madam. Your email should be short and sweet. These people are going to be looking at like hundreds of emails every day and you want to keep yours to the point. If you include your portfolio or any social media links, um, please try to make sure that they are linked. Um, I hope that makes sense. As in like, if you click on it, it should just immediately take you to that portfolio page. Um, you don't want to make them copy paste it to a browser because some people are not going to take the effort of doing that. You know, just trying to make it easy as possible for them. Um, as mentioned before, make sure you have an online portfolio. Uh, Instagram is just not going to cut it. It should be like a clean, organized collection of your work. Um, if you have your own portfolio site with a custom domain name, domain name that is great. Uh, if you don't, websites like Behance and Tumblr are acceptable as well. If you have a Tumblr, please make sure it is only your artwork and no, not like littered with <laughs> fanfics and cat gifts. Also make sure the email itself is written professionally, no grammar, spelling mistakes, um, nothing too casual, like you are speaking to a potential client. So you want to be, you know, have a sense of professionalism when you're typing the email out. Um, and this goes without saying, but make sure your email address is also professional. Just like, you know, first name, last name is fine. Make sure it's not something like, I love avrilavine 93 at hotmail.com. So I've written up a sample email that you can refer to. Um, you might need to make adjustments depending on what the submission requirements are, but hopefully this is helpful. Um, here we go. Dear human person. Hello, I'm Anusha Sayed, a freelance illustrator based in Toronto, and I received your contact info at reference. So I included this part just in case you were referred to by someone. I just want to name drop someone. I want to send my portfolio for consideration for any possible design work that I might be a fit for at company name. 
I'd love to work with you because this is where you explain your passions on why you want to work with this company. Um, you know, mention what you admire about the company and any specific works of theirs that you really like. Um, these people are going to be looking at a lot of emails. You do want to stand out. And this is the section that, you know, that you do that. I have previously worked, you know, for your work experience here. My website can be found here, and I've also attached my resume and a PDF file of some samples of my work. You can also find me, social media links. If you have any more information, please feel free to contact me. Thank you for your time and have a great day. Best, Anusha say it. Now you're going to submit to hundreds of places, and honestly, you're not going to get a lot of positive responses back. Sometimes you'll get rejections, but most of the time you won't get any response at all. And that's just mainly because of how many submissions that these companies get, and they just don't have the time to respond to all of them. If you've submitted to a place already, don't harass them and keep asking for updates. It's all right if you send them an email after several months, if you've had a significant update to your portfolio and you want to show them new work, but make sure you're not bombing them with emails either. It can be disheartening when you don't get a response, but don't lose hope because sometimes they do like your work, but they just don't have a project for you at this moment. Um, and then they'll keep you in mind months down the road until they find a project that is actually a fit for you. So for me, uh, there's just one time where I, um, I submitted to a place and I didn't get a response for like a year and a half. Um, and then they eventually they got back to me and they were like, hey, we saw your work and we want you to do a cover. And I was like, yay, this is all I have for submitting to companies. I hope this was helpful. Um, in part two, I'm gonna cover how to contact art directors and other passive ways of finding work. I hope this was a little bit informative. Uh, this is my first time doing something like this. If you have any questions, that you want me to answer in part two, please let me know if there are any other topics that you want me to cover in the future. Also, let me know in the comments. Mm, this, I think this is the part of the YouTube where I do like the YouTuber things like, like, comment, subscribe. Um, I do want to keep doing these videos. They are, they are fun and I just want to be able to share some knowledge with you guys. Uh, again, I hope this was helpful and see you next time for part two.